Welcome to the unsettling journey into the mind of Gerald Eugene Stano. Gerald Eugene Stano, an American serial killer, terrorized the state of Florida during the 1970s and early 1980s. His crimes were marked by brutality and a desire for control, leaving a trail of tragedy in his wake. This is the story of one of his heinous crimes. It was a sweltering summer evening in Dayton Beach, Florida, in 1980. The sun was beginning to set, casting a golden glow over the coastal city. On this particular night, Stano had honed in on his target, 18-year-old Mary Carol Maher, a young woman known for her vivacious personality and striking beauty. Mary Carol was a bright and ambitious student, excitedly planning her future and looking forward to college. As she walked down a well-lit street, completely unaware of the danger that lurked nearby, Gerald Stano watched her from the shadows. Stano had a way of approaching his victims, disguising his true intentions beneath a veneer of charm and charisma. He approached Mary Carol, striking up a seemingly innocuous conversation. She had no reason to fear the friendly stranger who appeared eager to help her. Stano offered her a ride, mentioning that he knew a shortcut to her destination. Unsuspecting, Mary Carol accepted the offer, and she got into Stano's vehicle. As they drove further away from the city lights, the atmosphere grew increasingly tense. Stano began to make suggestive comments and veiled threats, revealing his true intentions. Realizing the danger she was in, Mary Carol's fear surged. Stano's vehicle came to a halt in a remote, secluded area. Terrified and desperate, Mary Carol tried to escape, but she was no match for Stano's physical strength. He overpowered her, brutally assaulting her both physically and sexually. Mary Carol's pleas for mercy fell on deaf ears as Stano's violence escalated. After subjecting Mary Carol to unimaginable torment, Stano took her life, ending her dreams and aspirations in a single, tragic moment. Her lifeless body lay discarded in the desolate landscape yet another victim of Stano's insatiable lust for control and violence. As the days turned into weeks, Mary Carol Maher's disappearance sent shockwaves through the community. Her family and friends searched tirelessly for any sign of her, unaware of the horrors she had endured. But Stano, as he had done so many times before, managed to elude suspicion, leaving no trace behind. It would be years before Stano was finally apprehended and his reign of terror came to an end. In 1981, he was arrested and subsequently convicted of multiple murders, including the brutal slaying of Mary Carol Mayher. Dano's childhood was marred by a tumultuous family environment. His parents' marriage was characterized by frequent arguments and violence, leaving a profound impact on the young boy. Stano later claimed that his mother physically and emotionally abused him, adding to his troubled upbringing. At a young age, Stano displayed signs of psychological disturbance. He engaged in acts of animal cruelty and began a pattern of compulsive lying. These early indicators hinted at a deeply troubled psyche that would later manifest in a series of horrifying crimes. Gerald Stano's criminal activities began in his teenage years. He was arrested multiple times for various offenses, including burglary, auto theft, and petty theft. These early brushes with the law hinted at a propensity for criminal behavior, but it was not until he reached adulthood that his crimes took a much darker turn. In the late 1970s and early 1980s, Stano embarked on a spree of sexual assaults and murders that would terrorize the state of Florida. His victims were primarily young women, many of whom were hitchhikers or runaways. Stano's modus operandi involved luring them into his car, sexually assaulting them, and then brutally taking their lives. Gerald Stano's crimes left a trail of death and devastation across Florida. His victims included women like Mary Carol Maher, whose story was detailed in a previous response. Stano's pattern of violence and cruelty was chillingly consistent as he continued to evade capture while leaving a growing number of victims in his wake. Deneau's reign of terror eventually came to an end in 1980 when he was arrested and charged with the murder of a young woman named Kathy Lee Scharf. During his time in custody, Stano began to confess to a staggering number of murders, revealing the extent of his brutality. He provided authorities with gruesome details about his crimes and the locations of his victims' remains. Gerald Eugene Stano, the infamous serial killer, led a life marked by disturbing and intriguing aspects. Here are some interesting facts about him. Pathological liar. Stano was a compulsive liar from an early age. 
His penchant for deception extended to his criminal activities, where he often manipulated his victims and the authorities with elaborate lies. Love for photography. Stano had a passion for photography, a hobby that he used to approach and lure his victims. He would offer to take their pictures, gain their trust before ultimately attacking them. Vast number of victims. Stano confessed to the murders of more than 40 women during his incarceration. His willingness to provide details about his crimes shocked investigators and the public alike, revealing the extent of his brutality. False confessions. In addition to his genuine confessions, Stano was known for giving false statements, admitting to crimes he did not commit. This created challenges for law enforcement in verifying the accuracy of his claims. Educational background. Despite his troubled life, Stano managed to obtain an associate degree in electronics while in prison. He displayed an intellectual capacity that contrasted sharply with his violent tendencies. Tumultuous personal relationships. Stano's romantic relationships were tumultuous, often marked by violence and instability. His abusive behavior extended to his partners, reflecting the same patterns of control and dominance seen in his crimes. Inspired by other serial killers, Stano was known to have studied the crimes of other serial killers, including Ted Bundy. He found inspiration in their methods, adapting certain techniques to suit his own twisted desires. Love letters. During his time on death row, Stano received numerous letters from women who were infatuated with him. Despite the heinous nature of his crimes, he managed to attract a following of admirers who were fascinated by his dark persona, attempted suicide. Stano attempted suicide multiple times while in prison. His mental state deteriorated over the years, reflecting the internal turmoil he experienced as he faced the consequences of his actions. Infamous execution. Stano's execution by electric chair on March 23, 1998 marked the end of a chapter in Florida's history of capital punishment. His case contributed to discussions about the ethics and methods of execution in the United States. These facts offer a glimpse into the complex and disturbing life of Gerald Eugene Stano, revealing a man whose actions shocked the world and left a lasting impact on criminal psychology and the study of serial killers. Bid farewell to the darkness that defined Gerald Stano's life, but remember the haunting legacy that endures.